I was seven years old, and the conviction of the Holy Spirit came upon me, and I just started bawling. I knew I had to have Jesus. The Lord marked me, and I knew for sure um, that I was saved and that Jesus was real. And to this day, if nobody else in the world believes, I, it's in my heart, it's engraved in my very being. Welcome to our Grace family. Thank you for joining us. I'm Reverend Steve Millar, a minister here at Grace Cathedral, and this is my lovely wife, Kathy. On today's program, we have a longtime member from Grace Cathedral joining us, and he's going to share some wonderful miracles that God performed in his life. Welcome to the program, Pete. We're so happy to have you with us today. I am so excited to be here, <laughs> and it's what a privilege and a joy to talk and, about Jesus. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And you're a long-standing member going on, what, 50 years? 50 years next year. And the wow. Lord has really blessed you with many talents. Can you tell us uh, how many different things you're involved in with the work of the Lord? Well, actually, I sing with the uh, Singing Men's Quartet, and I also work with them, uh, writing and arranging songs for them. Um, I'm in, with our orchestra, that uh, the Grace Cathedral Orchestra directing our orchestra, writing and arranging for them as well. Um, we have different groups that branch off from that because sometimes the orchestra has, uh, we do a total instrumental. Sometimes it's a song with, uh, we have a soloist that we uh, perform with. We have other singers that we perform with. We've done a lot of songs with the choir through the years. And uh, we have other, also the quartet does, uh, sings with a couple of girls as and well. the orchestra sometimes sings. They do, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, they never thought so. And in fact, um, Reverend Millar, your wife, has told me years ago when she auditioned for the orchestra, she goes, well, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but I can, I can play the flute and I want to give something back to the Lord. And it was so precious. But she can sing, I found out, because when we were recording, I had listened to her voice and I'm like, who is that? Who is that? And it was Kathy and she had a nice low alto voice. So. Oh, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> and also, you're also in the Hallelujahs as well. Yes, I yes, yes. And that's, uh, that's a, a different type of singing for me. And uh, enjoy that. That's a blessing. And so the Lord has yeah. really blessed you with a lot of talents. And how many songs have you written? Do you know? I believe it's around 100. Some and some songs. of those were co-written uh, co also as well. And you edit the songs too, right? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, I've done around 200 arrangements. Um, do a lot of recording, editing, tuning, mixing, writing, arranging, um, sometimes writing things out by hand for the music, for the orchestra and so forth as well, depending on the situation. And that's just all God given. And I just thank the Lord. It's such an honor and a blessing that I can still be here and be a part. That's, so Pete, how yeah. did you find Jesus? When, well, it goes back to my mom and dad. They, I grew up in a Christian home and, uh, so I always heard about Jesus. They were involved in music, so I was around music all the time. My dad and mom both sang, and uh, mom played the piano and the organ. <laughs> so the scripture, 2 Timothy 3.15, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. And so that was in me. And in one of the services at a, a church we were going to at that time, I was seven years old, and the conviction of the Holy Spirit came upon me, and I just started bawling. I knew I had to have Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I told my mom, who was sitting beside me, I, and uh, usually if I moved around, she was like a lobster. That claw would, you know, she, <laughs> her, she'd dab the pinch with the nails, and I'd be like, oh, and then it'd make me squirm all the more. But this, she's like, well, why do you want to go up? And I said, oh, I just have to go. I just have to go. I, I just know I have to go. I have to go up and get so prayer. you had that desire. I did. Oh, it was so, the, God, the Holy Spirit was just pulling me. And we were, it was a long uh, walk down, and it was in, we were in the back of the church and walked down to the altar, and I was just pouring my heart out to God, and the Lord marked me, and I knew for sure um, that I was saved and that Jesus was real. It didn't matter what anybody said. And to this day, if nobody else in the world believes, I, it's in my heart. It's engraved in my very being. I'm going to go stand for Jesus. Yeah, at age seven, yes, right? Yes, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes. And uh, so that went from there. We went to, um, I, again, as I went, I never went out into the world, mm -hmm. deeply into the world. And this is so neat because I just saw something recently uh, when Reverend Angel had interviewed my parents. And he goes, everyone has a story. And, and you know, <laughs> you can hear him say that. And I thought back to a, uh, a cartoon that people are familiar with without naming it, how these kids were trigger treating. And uh, at one point they would find, oh, I got this big, huge candy bar. And they were naming all these different things they got. And they, what'd you get? And they said, pulls it out and he goes, I've got a rock. <laughs> and so I used to think, I, at one point, I didn't know what to tell about, but I do have a rock. I have a rock and his name is Jesus and he's Amen. the chief cornerstone. <laughs> and he, when you have him, he can keep you from going out in the world. I didn't want to go out in the world. I knew, I knew I'd be doing wrong. I knew I'd end up in hell. I didn't have that desire. I didn't want to hurt the Lord. And so that was always in there. And, and uh, God was so good. And then eventually we came to the point where I learned about the Holy Ghost because my parents were seeking more. And my mom ended up uh, going to prayer meetings. And th this was held by some of the people at Grace Cathedral. And so she went and she ended up getting the Holy Ghost. And I saw the change in my mom. Mm -hmm. And because up to that time, we had not been taught about the Holy Ghost, just like Paul said, to the people we have not heard, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe, but we have not heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. In Acts 2.39, it says, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Mm -hmm. So it's for you today. It's for right. me today. It's for us if you want all of God. So, so we ended up, I, again, I saw the difference in my mom. My dad ended up getting the Holy Ghost at home, praying at home. You can be anywhere as long as you're giving yourself praise mm -hmm. the Lord completely mm -hmm. to him. So my experience initially with the Holy Ghost was at a, a, a Christian camp that I went to. And um, it was a camp where the kids would go and they'd play ball and different things. And then in the evenings, we'd have uh, different speakers that would talk to the kids about accepting Jesus into your heart, about the what they felt was the Holy Ghost at that time. Now, this wasn't related to This was not related, related to, to Grace, Grace Cathedral. Cathedral. This is right, again, right before we came to Grace, th steps okay. leading up to it. So I was at this camp and uh, I liked playing ball. I played baseball a lot of years, uh, organized ball. And, but, so th that was one of the things I looked forward to going to that camp. Oh, they play ball, good, I'll go. So, but we were, had a co-ed volleyball game one time and there was this uh, one lady was just a girl who's just a little bit older than us. <clears throat> she was one of the counselors, it turns out. The ball was hit into the air, drops down beside her, and then her arms are up and she's acting like she's, the Holy Ghost is speaking through her. And so that was, in my mind, I thought that is so strange. I mean, people were saying, oh, you, what are you doing and all this? And so I thought, well, I guess someone, the Holy Ghost could speak through them at any time. But that was really a strange place to do it. That just didn't seem right. So I, I didn't right. know in my mind. I didn't know enough. You had a check mark. Yes, I definitely had a check mark. Yeah, the Holy Spirit's great at that, and he put that in me. Then later um, in the evenings, we were able to seek the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And so I was up praying at the altar that they had set up. And like a lot of people, I'm curious. I heard people praying for me, and I'm like, I wonder who's praying for me. So you peek. And I'm like, oh, no, it's a volleyball girl. So it was her and her, I guess, her boyfriend that were trying to help me to get the Holy Ghost. And I was already, oh, no, I don't know about this at all. So, but the Lord is so good, just as he made himself so real to me when I got saved. Um, as I was praying, I could just feel there's something real to this. So I was praising the Lord for quite a while. And the guy goes, okay, you praise the Lord long enough. Be quiet and let the Holy Ghost speak. I'm like, what? Oh, okay. So I'm... <laughs> You're quiet. Nothing's happening, you know? And I felt inside of me, I just felt, the Bible says that in the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, there was a sudden, there was a rushing mighty wind mm -hmm. as the Holy Ghost came in. And I felt a surge. I mean, I could just feel it coming from outside of me through all through my whole body. And I knew the Holy Ghost was real. And I could feel his frustration. He was being grieved because he wanted to speak through me. If I'd have known, he would have, wouldn't right. matter who was around was me, he would have prayed through right. me. So that was quite interesting. And then, so here I am. And finally he goes, just say whatever comes to your mind. And at, by that time, 
after what I had felt and was feeling through the, the real Holy Ghost, it would, it's like, you don't want to know what I, I don't want to say anything right now because it would be like, just get away from me. You know, mm -hmm. you don't know what you're talking about. But the Lord marked me so I knew that the that Holy Ghost was right. real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, then one of the, uh, someone who was over the dorm talked to me and said, you're the only one that hasn't gotten the Holy Ghost yet. And I'm like, well, it's a good thing because they, they didn't have right. the real thing. They were in false yeah, doctrine, right. which is sad. You're I hope they came across. Yeah, I hope they found tongues. the real Holy Ghost somewhere along the line. But um, Well, you were, like you said, you know, they were trying to teach you to speak in tongues at will. At will. And it's not mm -hmm. your will, it's the Holy Spirit's will, you know. Yes, and, sir. and when oh, you're yes. glorifying the Holy Spirit, he'll come in and take up your tongue and speak in a heavenly language. And that is the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. But what they were trying to do was just have you say, have self say whatever it wants, you right. know, Which say is, whatever, right. what comes to your mind. And that's, Sounding that's your mind, not yeah. the Holy Spirit. Tinkling symbol, nothing, nothing to that at all. Mm -hmm. So as we went along, um, um, my dad actually, when Reverend Angel's wife, Angel, whom he affectionately called Angel, she passed away. And my dad went to the funeral with a friend. I never even knew this until years later. And it had an impact on him. And two years later, it took some time for the Lord to deal with him. But he, they were seeking. He was seeking. Two years later, he started visiting Grace Cathedral at the location on Canton Road. And I remember this very vividly. Uh, my mom would pull to the end of the driveway instead of pulling down, let him out at the end of the long drive. And, dad, I'd, and I'd look and watch. And I'd see my dad walking <laughs> to church. I thought there's something to this, but we, she, it was hard for her to make that change. Mm -hmm. And right before we came, before mom did decide to come, the devil was trying to kill us. And we were almost home. They say most accidents take place close to home. And there was a pretty sharp turn. So we we're coming around the curve. The car was coming the other direction toward us and was going so fast that they tried to get back around that corner, get back in their lane but they end up going on two wheels. So they're coming at us like a, like a stunt car driver, but really fast. Mom didn't know what to do. She turned the wheel, went up over the curb. We were on a, uh, a little median right there and finally came to a stop. And that car eventually I was watching because as a boy, I'm like in the back seat, what's going <laughs> on, you know? And he, he was fine. So she goes, wasn't there a telephone pole right in front of us? And I thought, well, and I, I'm looking and I looked behind the car and it was right directly behind us. Um, I'd gotten out of the car, you know, curious. Mm -hmm. And it was just a few, seriously, a few feet behind us in, in the, about the middle of the wow. bumper. So God moved and, and we did bounce hitting there. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what happened. God took care of us. <laughs> Mom always said, I think we went through the telephone pole. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, honestly, I don't know because everything way. happened so quickly. Yeah. And I'm watching this other car. And next thing you know, boom, 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 we're stopped. And, uh, but God took care of yeah, us. And the devil was trying to wipe us out. You. And we came and uh, came on to Grace Cathedral as a family. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, and on oh. the way, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the times Reverend goes, you know, they believe you have to have the Holy Ghost to make the rapture here. And I thought, Lord, if that's true, I want the Holy Ghost. And I accept that. that. really affected yeah. you in oh, a great yes, way. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, we have to take a quick okay. break. So, friends, stay with us. We have more to come. We'll be right back. What God has done in the lives of others, He can certainly do for you. Stay tuned for more Our Grace Family. Visit Our Grace Family on our website, for exclusive content and downloads. Tom from Akron, Ohio shares this testimony. I was diagnosed with an irregular heartbeat and very high blood pressure, but there was also something else wrong with my heart that was causing my condition. I told God that if he would heal me and take care of whatever my problem was, I would do my part and take care of myself. I received prayer from Reverend Angley and God healed me. Our Grace Family is supported by viewers like you. Your donation is greatly appreciated. Your financial gift ensures that this faith building program can continue to be a blessing to you and your family and to many others just like you.
We're back with Pete Jones. And Pete, you let us know that Reverend Angie said that you must have the Holy Ghost to make the rapture. Yes. Now, yes. you told us about how you received salvation. Can you finish up and let us know how you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Um, you know, the Bible says is according to the power that worketh within you. And so I actually had gone, started going up to the altar to yield to the Lord, to receive the Holy Ghost. And I was able to yield some at that point. And the Holy Ghost had started speaking through me some. I uh, wasn't satisfied yet. So I had to, I continued. And you, again, like we talked about, I believe um, you can seek at home as well. And I just kept seeking until I got a satisfied portion. Mm -hmm. And Jesus had said, uh, he told the disciples to tarry. You know, before they even started their ministry, they had to get the Holy Ghost. Jesus himself, as our example, had to get the Holy Ghost before he started his ministry. So, uh, and the Holy Ghost is given to them that obey him. Yes. I mean, if you want all of God and obey God, you'll receive the Holy Ghost. So you were satisfied when the Holy Ghost came in and you oh, started yes. speaking in tongues. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. to go back to what Reverend Angeli said, it's, it's that power within you, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to yes, change sir. you in a moment in a twinkling of an eye yeah. to make the second coming of the Lord, the rapture. Yes. I don't, who want, I don't want to be left here. This world's a yes. mess. Yes. And That's Jesus true. is coming soon. So how does the Holy Ghost help you write music? I mean, Every song that I do, Reverend Blair and Kathy, I just pull on the Lord. I just ask the Holy Spirit to anoint me. I don't start unless I just take time to really yield to the blood, to yield to the Holy Spirit. So God can move and put this together. So it's he, like a painting. He can give you his thoughts. Yeah, his thoughts. Because and then I'll look at something, especially with the orchestra pieces later, and I'm like, <laughs> where, where'd that come from? It was the Lord. It was the Lord, and he just and I just want every piece to come out exactly how he wants to bless people and to win souls, and that's what we're doing, you know, and occupying until he comes. And that's why it's so important to have the Holy Spirit to help He's you. He's the teacher. In writing music yeah. and and even arranging oh, yes. it. Well, we have a special treat for our audience today. We're gonna to take them to Grace Cathedral Sanctuary to hear a song that you wrote, I'm His Forever, and wow. it's being sung by the Singing Men's Quartet. So friend, enjoy this song. You're gonna be blessed. In this world of sin and sorrow, we must make our way. Stand and live for Jesus every day. We know that He will never leave us or forsake us along life's way. If we just trust in Him with all your heart, then you can say, I'm His forever. I'll never leave Him, never. I've never had it better since I gave my life to Him. Let His Spirit lead your way. You'll walk in the steps of Jesus. Then you will say, I'm His forever. I'll never leave Him, never. I've never had it better since I gave my life to Him. I'll live forever with Him in glory, never living out the story, the story of a day.
What a beautiful, uplifting song. And now, Pete, could you tell us a little bit more about that song? Well, sure. When I was asked, when I was told about this song, that you were going to use it, I thought about the end of the chorus and how it ties right in with what uh, the Lord gave me, that everyone has a story. And it says that we're going to live it forever, the story of amazing grace. And that's what every uh, person who has Jesus in their heart, they had that story, the story yes. of Jesus, which is the story of his wonderful, amazing grace. And, and uh, so... Uh, and the, one of the verses, and for example, I w went into uh, Untying God's Hands, which is a, a great instructive manual that Reverend Angel had written a number of years ago to help with uh, some of the wording on that. And it just blessed me. You know, I'm his forever. I'll never leave him, never. <laughs> what? Yes, you know? yes, I do love that line. Yes. The story it's, of his amazing grace. Yeah, and it's grace. God's love that yes, he gave us yeah. Jesus and that grace that we have that opportunity to accept Jesus Christ yes, into sir. our oh, heart. Yeah. And we all have well, unique all stories about. of mm -hmm. how we receive Christ yes, and, yes. and his amazing grace. Oh, yeah. Yes. For God's not willing for any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, Pete, could you tell us about some miracles? Oh, definitely. When, when I first came into the ministry, shortly after as a teenager, um, one of the things, the problems I had... Uh, it, it has the symptoms of vertigo. I was never diagnosed with that, but sudden dizziness, uh, spinning sensations, um, it would just hit me wherever I was at in class or um, wherever so you I was. you were young. I was, I was young, yes. And the last attack, I call them attacks that I had, I was at home and I was in one part of the, it was a ranch house. I was at the end of the house. My bedroom was on the, on the other end. They say the best thing is to try to be, just to get still. And I was actually running into the walls, the door jams. I mean, and Cut from there, my stomach would get sick. So it was just, it was very unpleasant. You know, it's a little bit scary it too. It does sound like vertigo. That's, it does, it really does. And so in one of the services shortly after that, uh, I believe it was on a Friday night, Reverend had said, Reverend Angel had said that, use your faith and just reach up and receive anything that you need from God and God can heal you right there. And I did, and God <laughs> healed me of that and took it away. And I didn't have to worry about that anymore because I'd been healthy. And like I said, at that, I used to, was involved in sports and so forth, but which is beside the point. But um, God took that away. And, and I, it, it was, he really marked me with that. The miracles are lasting. They are lasting, yes, yes. And uh, as time went on, I, I had a situation where um, it was my own fault, but a crane had fallen across the tops of my feet just past the toes. And it was only 120 pounds, I believe, but it still had an edge on it, which is like a cookie cutter effect. So I had some lacerations and contusions and so forth. And the biggest problem was, in fact, a couple of my buddies who are both weightlifters, they grabbed me and stuck me on a pallet with a tow motor and ran me down. We, someone took me to the hospital. But the um, bottom line is on that one, I was off work at that time, hurting a lot with my feet. I couldn't really, I couldn't put pressure on them. And I came in on a service on a Friday night, sitting in the invalid section. I'll never forget this. When God moves, I mean, God really moved. Reverend Angel prayed for me. And it was just like, I always think of it as a dam breaking. Because instantly, I, the, you could feel the blood flowing in my feet. Life. Jesus is a life giver. <laughs> and so it, that was awesome. And then I went back to work. And they're like, what are you doing here? They're surprised <laughs> I was walking. It just surprised them. Uh, something that's really neat uh, as a musician, um, I, all I wanted to do, I, I wanted to play the trumpet for Jesus. And, uh, and uh, that, that's why I played. And I just wanted the Lord to anoint me to do that. And I had damaged my, it's a kind of st long story there, but from playing incorrectly, because I did a lot of the high notes. And uh, I damaged the lip muscles, which make up what's called an embouchure. Um, musicians are familiar with that. And it actually went into my cheeks and my chin, you know, because this actually, you know, as far as what forms for the trumpet. And I couldn't play anymore. I was playing at church and I would be up playing. It was like Popeye, you know, when he goes to make a muscle uh, before he has a spinach. You've seen that? <laughs> that it just boing, goes down that way. And so that my lip would do that too. And it's about the only way to really. So you couldn't get any sound or? Well, it, it would give out. So you have to keep that pressure. <laughs> And, and it would just, it wouldn't move. It wouldn't hold. And we'd be playing up on the platform and it would do that. And it was terrible. Um, it was just, it was embarrassing, embarrassing for the Lord. But I, Reverend Angel, he prayed for me in his office. 
And he said, the glory of the Lord, power of the Lord's all in through your face. And I felt tingling all over my lips, my cheeks, my <laughs> chin. And God moved and I got a recreation of those muscles that make that up. And uh, then uh, been playing, played a number of years after that. So that was an instant miracle. It was. Re- it was awesome. Received. Yeah. Because when I was really? in college, I couldn't even in the recital. I couldn't even, it, it would give out. And they said a lot of people had to stop playing because of that. But God moved so I could continue to play. So that can be common? Is that what it is, saying? yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the Lord moved to, to take that all oh, away yeah. and it give you the strength. It's a good thing yes. because you, the Lord. you've had to, you know, play your instrument after that um, right. for oh, yeah. some of the recordings. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. So yeah. forth. It, so. It's, uh, I love to do it. And it was just uh, uh, something that the Lord blessed me with to be able to do. And I received uh, uh, got a kidney recreation, which a lot of people aren't aware of. I was up on the platform and I had extreme pain in the, uh, the lower right side and where the, the kidney's located. And uh, I actually thought it was my back and Reverend said, it's a kidney, God's moving. And the Lord had recreated my kidney. Oh, that's mm. wonderful. Yeah. Well, Pete, thank Praise you so Lord. much for sharing these wonderful miracles and healings, but we have to take another quick break here. Okay. So friends, stay with us. We have more to come. We'll be right back. Hebrews 13, five. He hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. The greatest miracle is when you see a life change Mm -hmm. like that. I started to decide there's something to this. There's Mm -hmm. something I want to start attending here. I was just holding to the promises. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew, I knew that God would move. He was walking, you know, and the doctor said he would never walk again. There's no cancer anywhere. <laughs> she says, not on her nose, not in her breast, it's gone. And Pete, we want to thank you so much for being on the program today and for sharing your story and wonderful testimonies with us. And friend, we had a lady from Akron, Ohio, let us know that when she wasn't feeling well, she couldn't wait to get to the Friday night service to receive prayer. And when the man of God, Reverend Angeli, prayed for her, the gift of discernment took over and the Lord let her know that she had a growth at the base of her brain. And that is why she was having dizzy spells and passing out. And after she received prayer, her head felt light and she received her miracle. God did it. What a wonderful miracle. What a life-changing miracle. And friend, if you'd like a life-changing miracle, come and visit us and be in the service and let God move for you in a great way. God bless you. God bless you. We'll see you next time. (laughs) Bye-bye. We would love to hear from you. If you are encouraged or blessed by today's program, let us know. You can email us at ogf at thegracecathedral.org or write to us. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Ernest Angley Ministries.